And as we were talking about this morning, Cody did in fact suffer a torn pec, and he did in fact wrestle with a torn pec, and he and Seth Rollins had just an incredible match in the main event of that show. Absolutely compelling match. It was very compelling, very concerning. It sure was. I mean, it's like I'm watching it, and I'm just going like, is there any like medical protocol here? Well, I mean, I don't know, but it's WWE, and I find it hard to believe that if a doctor said, bro, you can't wrestle, and he said, well, I want to, They'd be like, okay, well, go out there. I, I presume that some doctor must have said, like, you can do it. Of course. It's probably going to hurt, but you can do it. Are they looking out for his well-being? Well, that's a good question. Um, do you know what I mean? It's like, are you, you know, shouldn't the doctors be looking out for the well-being? I mean, it's it's like the well-being or, or, or are they just like rubber stamping stuff? And well, listen, if that's, and, I, if that's the, and if that's the, and if that's the case, I mean, like, look, I know Cody was going to do it. You know what I mean? This was Cody's. I think this was his first singles main event ever in WWE. And, uh, you know, he's not going to you know what I mean? He's not going to pull out. You know, I mean, he's got the thing in his head. The guy set himself on fire to get over. You know what I mean? He's not going to pull out over anything you know as long as he could walk if he had torn his knee up he was going to go out there you know if he had broken his leg he might want to go out there um you know but it's at some point i mean isn't part of this uh the reason that we have doctors to protect people from their own um you know what i mean the, the fact that they, they're so these guys are, are so driven you know, I mean, it's like not it's not like there's anything new or anything like that. I mean, I remember when when Ric Flair broke his neck in the 80s and he just, you know, handful of painkillers and go out there every night and nobody even knew he broke his neck. You know, it wasn't like, you know, some guys break their neck and they're out for a couple of weeks or whatever like that. I mean, he just he was NWA world champion and uh, just kept going, you know, but, you know, in hindsight, is that a good thing is is isn't. You know, I don't know. I mean, there's there should be should be something somewhere. I mean, I saw him go out there and just like, you know, who who let him go out there? You know, and of course he said, well, it's my choice. I mean, I'm sure nobody. I'm sure if if um, Vince McMahon said to him, like, um, it's a, uh, you know, what I mean, it's like, um, what do you want to do? You know, um, and I'm gonna force. It's like it's not like put it away. Not like Vince forced him to go out there. It was his choice to go out there, but because of the drive that some of these people have i mean shouldn't there be somebody with enough common sense to say hey in a choice you got a freaking you're you know i mean because again i've seen a lot of wrestling matches and i have never seen a guy go out there. i've seen a, and I, look i've seen a lot of guys tear pecs um in matches and you know, that's what they look like a couple of days later. But I've never seen a guy who tore his pec right before. I've seen some torn biceps where guys went out there, and I never thought that that was a particularly great idea um, to go out there. Uh, you know, in that situation, I've seen people tear their ACLs and go out there. And, um, you know, in the case of some guys, you know, like uh, Barry Windham is a perfect example of a guy who worked on a torn ACL, who was one of the greatest wrestlers I've ever seen. And, you know, ended up, you know, it costing him greatly at the other end of his career. And he was not nearly as good, not even close to as good as he was when he was in his 20s. Because, you know, not that he got old, you know, because he wasn't that old. It's because, you know, you, you go in there with that mentality. And I remember Kurt at the, uh, I never understood how, you know, Kurt at the WrestleMania in Seattle, the same thing. You know, where he went out there and he had a broken neck. And he went out there and did the match because he well he's gonna have surgery later and it's like he's got a broken neck you know what i mean here's my theory and uh i don't want this reported as fact it's just my theory so uh, i talked to somebody who said that uh from the looks of his injury and the fact that he was able to move his arm although he was clearly in pain 
it was probably a tear of the pec minor, which is probably. underneath the pec major. And the announcer said that his pec had been torn off the bone. And so my presumption is that the doctor probably said, like, it's torn off the bone. You can't make it worse. It's already off the bone. So you're not going to do any more damage working in this condition. And if you mm, want to go out there oh, and do the match... I mean, he could clearly tear the look, rest of his pack. There's there's always more damage you can do when you have a weakness Sure. Like I, listen, that. I'm not advocating it. I'm not saying it was a good idea. I'm not saying he should have done it. I'm just saying that this is probably why he was allowed to go out there well, it's a pretty and do the bad, match. It's a pretty bad reason because it's the same thing. It's like if I go out there and... Let's say I tear my quad and I'm going to go limp out there and and go through a match. And, and Cody did a great job, and the, the match was super compelling. You know, it was, it was an absolutely memorable match. You know, something that you'll, you know, probably make him into a, a superhero like Mick Foley. You know, in the Hell in a Cell. I don't know if it'll be quite that. I mean, because here we are, you know, decades later, still talking about Hell in a Cell. But maybe, but it, and it may be the closest thing because with Kurt, as much as that was. Because people couldn't see the visibility and didn't really... I don't think people really understood how badly Kurt was hurt when he did that match with Brock Lesnar. Yeah, because they didn't was, tell you. Like, they hammered it in your heads in this match. Well, there, there was, there was, the, the bruise was so visible, you couldn't help. Like, with Kurt, people knew, but I don't think they really got it because he wasn't all bruised up. But with Cody, it was really clear. And plus, it was the whole point of the match. I mean, I'm watching Kurt bump on his neck with a broken neck going, what the hell is this guy doing? You know? Um... And, you know, in the long run, um, you know, I mean, I, I remember that week and it was just kind of like people in wrestling were just like, you know, they were, un, you know, was, they were flabbergasted that, that Kurt would do it. And like the big thing was, is like, oh, you know, um, he needs that WrestleMania payoff because back in those days, you know, the WrestleMania payoff was a, was a big, big amount of money. And, 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 you know, there was concern he would never wrestle again. Because it was that bad. So he was kind of going in, well, I may never wrestle again. Um, and so I'm going to go out there and try to do this five star match with Brock, you know, and he was absolutely trying to do that. Um, and in, in, um, you know, when you, but, but in hindsight, um, was that in his best interest? I want, you know, I mean, Vince got the match he advertised, but was that really in his best interest at the end of his career? Or well, now? At I, this point? I, I believe that probably these doctors all make a decision based on, okay, is this, can you work on this injury? Is it possible you're going to die or suffer permanent disability? I mean, listen, we saw Britt Baker, she broke a wrist and she took no time off. And, they let her work all of these matches with a broken wrist. And, you know, Kurt Angle with his broken neck, I mean, that's a different story. Like, that guy absolutely should not have been in the ring. You land on your broken neck, you die. Britt Baker's not going to die of a broken wrist. So I think that, that probably these doctors all have to make some determination because so many people have some injury of some sort. Well, but And okay, Cody's obviously was very, as you noted, you can't not see it. His whole chest from, like, the middle of his chest all the way down his arm. I mean, he was purple everywhere, so it's, you know, impossible to miss. But there's a lot of people working with a lot of injuries right now. Okay, but none like this. Well, not to this degree, no. Yeah, well, that's the key. There's got to be a line somewhere in the yeah. sense of, I mean, you're talking about, like, oh, you know, he couldn't tear the th You know, once you have a weakness then everything around it becomes, you know, you overcompensate, and that, like, that leads to, you know, it can, you know, put it this way. His his odds of getting another serious injury while wrestling in this condition were much higher than, like, yours would be if well, he went in sure. there with a, broken, with a broken wrist. Sure. Yeah. So at some point, you know, I mean, is it only if you have a concussion and can't pass the concussion test and everything else is cool? I mean, it sh I don't know that, you know, it sh it, that, that that should be the only thing you get ruled out for. Well, we know that's not the case because they retired Paige because of her neck. And uh, other people have been retired because of their neck. Some people have been retired and allowed to come back despite their neck. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what... I'm not a doctor. I don't know what their uh, their line is, but... 
Apparently, he wasn't over the line for this doctor. He was, well, obviously, he wasn't over the line. They let him. They let him do it. And and, and look, he was never going to say no. I mean, I, I, you know, that was pretty clear all day yesterday. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I didn't even have to. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, if you had told me um, Friday morning, Cody Torres Peck, and he's got the show, I would have said, okay, um, I would have said he's going to want to do it, and he's going to. You know, he's going to probably do it, but I wouldn't say 100 percent that he would do it. But I would, I would have leaned towards it, right? Um, this morning, uh, I was 100 percent. You know, it's like there's, there's not a chance in the world he's not doing this match unless they tell him no. And, at, at, and, and at that point, it was kind of like, for his own good, I wish they would tell him no. You know, I mean, and again, it doesn't even, you know, but, you know, they didn't. Um, and you know, I mean, it's not like look. I don't. I don't know that Jeff Hardy should have been in the ring. Um, you know, when he, you know, in that match with uh, the Young Bucks last Sunday, and a lot of people have said that. I'm not like the first person to say that. Um, I think that when these guys are in really bad shape, there should be someone to protect them from their own drive. I mean, the reason these guys are top guys in every case is because they are so ridiculously driven, and Cody more than most. Um, and because of that, they're not going to say no. Um, I mean, you know, we had a whole year of, you know, you know, if you, you know, listen to the show with Kenny Omega, I mean, you know, you can hear that. And, you know, the whole the whole year of, 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 uh, of what he was going through. Um, but this was... I mean, well, it's funny because, like, with Kenny Omega, I mean, if I were a doctor and I had to choose, you know, which guy am I going to learn in the ring? Kenny Omega with vertigo or Cody Rhodes with a, a torn pec minor? I mean, I'd probably clear Cody first. Guy with vertigo in the ring doing dives and all of that other stuff? That's crazy. And he did that for years with no problem, though. He yeah, but that's that. crazy. Well, it's a, I mean, you can't argue he did it with no problem, so it's okay because Cody did the match tonight with no. He's okay. Doesn't mean he should have been in there. Yeah. Well, um, that's like saying, well, if the, you drive, vertigo, you know, the, this guy drove drunk fifteen times, never got in a wreck, so it's okay. It's never okay. Okay. Doesn't well, matter if he survived. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Wrestling with vertigo is crazy. But it, it's it's um, it's not like the vertigo was going on. Um, I mean, he did work the, the 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 one you know right after the Naito match. I mean, he did work with that, and you're right. And he probably sh he probably shouldn't have. But after that, I mean, he had it was what you know he had it, but he didn't have it in the degree that it was like he was incapacitated. Vertigo, you know what I'm saying? It's like he was going through like normal life, and it wasn't like you know. I mean, he wasn't any pain from the vertigo, and it wasn't like he was going on the top ropes and falling down. Because if he was, fuck yeah, he shouldn't have been in the ring. Um, but this guy was, it was just a, oh man, I just thought that, um, I don't know, there should be some, I just feel there should be some medical protecting these guys from themselves because, um, you know, it's a great story, you know, it's a great story and, um, you know, it'll be one of those things again that, you know, everyone's going to remember this match and I always remember the match and the guys, you know, obviously the guys, Whatever it is, tolerance, pain, guts, drive, um, you know, if that's, you know, whatever, you know, I mean, he proved it in spades and um, hopefully he gets it taken care of. And, and hopefully when he comes back, um, you know, that, uh, you know, he will get the same treatment from the company or close to it that, that Paul Levesque did under similar circumstances with the quad. Um, it probably won't be that way. Hopefully it will be close because he's a main event guy. I mean, like, you know, Paul Levesque, it was it was very, very compelling. And it was, um, you know, it was, like, you know, really a a great comeback story because they wanted it to be, you know, it was the right guy who they were going to push at the right time to do the comeback. And it's one of the most memorable, you know, returns that they've ever had. And I remember, you know, how many other guys have been out for a year and got none of that. But I hope that he gets some of that, especially because of the way he left. And, and uh, hopefully he gets surgery. Hopefully he's OK, you know by Royal Rumble, you know, which I guess would be about the the target date would be right around there. Um and uh can come back and and 
do the WrestleMania, you know, and, and win the Royal Rumble. And uh, whatever, you know. I mean, like, hopefully he'll be over enough to do that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought, I thought Corey Graves was absolutely phenomenal tonight. I was listening to the commentary, and that was one of those things where um, the other guys, they were okay, but he just drove it home over and over again. I mean, he went from being, you know, he's usually the heel commentator, and he did the flip. I mean, this whole story of the match was how gutsy Cody was, and he couldn't believe it, and the pain and everything like that. And the guy had to be in, in ridiculous pain. Look at those bad bruising. Um, and, um, you know, so I was just so impressed with, with him. I mean, the other announcers did it, but he really, boy, did he hammer it home. And that was another reason why that match really turned out to be, you know, again, when all said and done, it's it's just an incredibly memorable match, um, and um, they worked a, a smart match. I mean, yeah, if they did that, people go, well, if they did that same match and he wasn't hurt, we would be going like, you know, it was uh, it was not the greatest Hell in a Cell match, and it's like, yeah, you know what? Well, we didn't get uh, all kinds of superplexes and Falcon arrows, and you know, we, we, you know, they were a lot more careful on what they did. Um, and they tried to make the selling mean something because, you know, everybody knew he was going to, the selling did mean something. They did the right match for what they, the deal they were. You know, you can't say, oh, you know, you know, it was a phenomenal performance by both men. It was a great, great match. Um, and in the long run, I mean, I hope in the long run it doesn't lead to, you know, again, you know, more problems down the line. Um, and, you know, I mean, there's a lot of problems. I mean, hopefully he can avoid those problems. But, I mean, I'm just talking, there's so many problems that can come about by doing, you know, by by doing this. So I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I um, I hope he has the surgery and uh, rests up and has a great life and comes back and is absolutely over like crazy. There was a point, um, there was a point where the crowd was turning on him. And I mean, I they, was they weren't like, turning on him. It was it was it was because they had a uh, false or a, a, a whatever the Madcap Moss and and Corbin had their no holds barred match, yeah. and uh, the fans for the entire match were chanting for tables. They wanted 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 tables. They didn't get tables because they were going to use a table in the main event. So when Seth finally went into the ring and got the table. They started chanting, thank you, Seth. And so there right. was a huge thank you, Seth chant because he got the table. But it wasn't because they were turning on Cody. It was it was more, you know, thank you because for finally getting a fucking table we've been chanting yeah, for yeah, for 45 let's, let, minutes. Let, let's 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 put the let's put the guy through the table rather than have some, And there was yeah. the one spot also at the very end where he hit the two um crossroads and then shoved the guy down and they did boo because they wanted to see three. But then when he grabbed the uh, sledgehammer and ended up hitting the sledgehammer, they gave him the big pop for that. So I, I didn't see at any point in the match where they turned on Cody, but there was that point where they decided Seth was the greatest guy ever because he finally got a table for him. Yeah, the announcer, I mean, I could tell with Corey, um, and, and actually all of them, um, at that point when they were like, thank you, Seth, that they were, you could see that they were pretty disgusted um, with the crowd. And I, you know... Because it was kind of like, oh my, you know, because they even said like the like the crowd was like animals or something like that. I mean, there was a there was a reference that they usually wouldn't make. Um, well, they were clearly of, confused. Yeah, I mean, it it was whatever. I mean, I just thought like that was a uh, a pretty weird situation. But um, I mean, other than that, I mean, they opened the the the, first, the women's match was very good that opened it, and, and other than that, it was um, you know, it's like watching Raw. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.